Let's explore some time value of money concepts by tackling some problems together. You happen to have bought a collection of comic books for $50 in 2004 when they were first published. However, you really need money to buy textbooks for the fall 2017 semester, so you decide to sell your collection online. After doing some research, you find out your comic books appreciate or gain value at a rate of 1.3% per year. What should your asking price be if you want to sell the comics at the price they are worth today? So it can be tempting to assume that just because the question is asking us to calculate an unknown value in 2017, which is the current year in the question, uh, that we're trying to find the present value, but that would be an incorrect assumption. What the question is really asking us to do is forecast the value forward from 2004, or compound it forward from 2004. So we're really looking for the future value, which we know is given to us by the expression present value times 1 plus the rate raised to n. And we know that the present value is equal to $50, which is what we paid for the comic books in 2004. And we know that the rate at which the comic books grow in value is 1.3% or 0.013. And we know that the n value, or the number of periods, can be found by subtracting from 2017, we would subtract 2004. And again, 2017 is the year in which we're selling the comic books, and 2004 is the year in which we bought them and they were published. And that gives us 13 years. Now again, keep in mind that years do not always mean periods. But in this case, because the growth rate compounds annually, uh, years do equal periods, because we wouldn't have to multiply this by anything. So. All we have to do now is just plug in the values, and we would have 50 times 1.013 raised to 13. And that should give us a future value of $59.14. So we're really not making all that much by selling these comic books. Let's move on to the second question. In 2025, you become a proud parent and begin thinking about your daughter's future. Still sad about having to sell your comic book collection, you want to try your best to ensure your daughter will never have to do something like that. You aim to save up $50,000 for when she begins university in around 2043. You find an education savings plan that grows at 8% per year. How much money do you have to invest to reach your goal? And so this question is the opposite of the previous question in the sense that this time we don't know what present value is, even though we know that the expression for it is future value times 1 over 1 plus the interest rate raised to the number of periods. And we know what all of these variables are because they were given to us in the question. So the future value is our goal of $50,000 in savings. And our rate of interest is 8%, or 0 0.08. And we know that our periods, and again, we're going to have to subtract this time around, uh, just like we did in the last question. So 2043 minus 2025, which gives us 18 years. And we know that this is an annually compounding rate, so we wouldn't have to change this because the number of years is equal to the number of periods when it's annually compounding. And so we just plug the values in, we get 50,000 times 1 over 1.08 raised to 18. And that should give us $12,512.8. Or five, and that would be our initial investment. Now the third question. One day, you visit a thrift store and see the exact same comic book collection you sold priced at $87.13. As you reach out to pick it up, your friend calls you up and asks if he can borrow $45 for five days. He promises he will pay you back with interest compounded daily at whatever rate you name. If you want him to pay you back the price of the comic book collection, what rate should you give him? And so this question can seem a little complicated. Uh, however, it's important to remember that really we're just dealing with the same variables here. All that's changed is what we know and what we don't know. So the amount that we don't know is the rate of interest, or the R value. But we do know the expression to find it. So that's future value over present value raised to 1 over n minus 1. And we know that the future value is just the cost of the comic book collection, so $87.13. And we know that the present value is equal to $45, or the 
uh, amount that we're loaning to our friend. And the way that we get the uh, number of periods is we recognize that our friend has said that he's going to loan he's going to loan the money for five days, and he's going to pay us interest uh, compounded on a daily basis. So in this case, really what he means is that the number of periods is equal to the number of days. So n does equal five in this case, and we just plug the values in: eighty-seven point one three over forty-five, all raised to one over five minus one. And that should give us approximately 0.1413 or 14.13%. That brings us to the end of this video. Still confused? Rewind to the relevant part of the video by clicking on the sections listed to the left. For more, be sure to take a look at the Academic Success Center website, where you'll find tip sheets and tutoring hours in case you need a more face-to-face -face approach.